Hi, this is Bob Samuels, the co-founder of Tech Connector, a full stack ABM B2B lead generation marketing solution. I'm also the founder and host of the ABM Leaders Group. Part of the fun of my job is to learn about and enable the sharing of best practice ideas. Today, I have the honor to speak with Heather Shreen of Media Matters and Haifa Sweeney from SAP Concur. They're kind enough to share some secrets behind their successful team efforts. Please introduce yourselves, including your background. Haifa, do you wanna start? Sure, sounds good. I'm Haifa Sweeney and I am part of the marketing team at SAP Concur. And I've been here for about five and a half years. And as you may know, uh, Concur sells travel expense and invoice management software. And my role at the company is to deliver leads and pipeline for our SMB audience segment in North America. And prior to joining Concur, I worked for a couple of different consumer travel brands. And I also did paid acquisition there as well. And I'm really happy to be here and have this conversation today. So thank you for having us, Bob. Thanks. Heather? Yeah. Hi, Bob. Hi, Haifa. Nice to see you. And, and yeah, thank you for having us. Um, my name is Heather Shreen, and I'm a media director at Media Matters Worldwide. I've been at the company for about three and a half years now, working on B2B accounts, overseeing brand and demand gen strategy. Prior to that, I was at DWA working on B2B and consumer tech accounts. And uh, before that, I was at a couple of boutique agencies uh, working on direct response programs um, and then uh, some guerrilla marketing that was uh, a part of uh, an agency where we were working with liquor brands. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and I, uh, yeah, so I, my background is in B2B and B2C, uh, but I have a special love for B2B. Nice. So you both mentioned B2C. What, what do you see as the differences and advantages between B2B and B2C? You know, there's so many things I really love about marketing directly to the consumer, like ha having that really real time conversion data and being able to identify revenue tracking um, really granular on a daily basis. But now that I'm in a role marketing to businesses, it's a whole new exciting challenge to think more strategically long term. And at a company like Concur with these complex products and a really long sales cycle, there's just so many steps that go into reaching our audiences. And there's usually multiple people involved in purchase decisions, multiple channels and touches where we're targeting these different personas and um, personalizing our message. The content is different depending on the different roles. And so we're taking, you know, the basic principles of marketing that would be true, whether you're doing B2C or B2B, where you're learning about the customer, identifying their pain points, thinking about the solutions that you can provide to help them solve those. And in both worlds, it's really strategizing based on that data um, and making sure your message and your content is really relevant to the audiences. So there's a lot of overlap in the strategy. But as you know, there's a lot of different tactics in uh, generating B2B leads that are um, a little different, and you're nurturing those leads over time. Heather? Yeah, I, I definitely think B2B is more complex. I remember in my early years, I was put on the Cisco account, which was a little challenging at first. Um, I had to really get used to a lot of the different products and solutions. IT was not my background. And you know, I wasn't familiar with a lot of the terminology that is used when you're speaking to that audience. But once you really understand how to do the research and you know to see where your audience is spending time and then understand what the buyer's journey is for B2B decision makers, and how you, you really need to reach them across different channels and connect with them and really build that trust. Uh, I really enjoyed creating that strategy. I think it is different from consumer marketing where you know, it's really a lot of the, the instant click or purchase and it has a lot to do with convenience. It's, it's a much shorter sales cycle. Uh, so with a longer sales cycle for B2B, there's so much that needs to be done to nurture that prospect, as, as Haifa said. And um, I think when we get that reporting and we go into our dashboard and, and can see that new pipeline um, that's been added and, and really see what's worked to drive that and, and what's really moved the needle, um, it's, it's so nice to be able to have that visibility uh, with, with SAP Concur. That makes sense. Thank you. So I understand congratulations in order. So good luck, good, good job on your recent ANA Northern California Spotlight Award. 
Thank you. Yeah, that was such an honor to be recognized by such incredible leaders in the industry. Uh, Media Matters has been recognized a lot over the last two years for all the wonderful work we do and the growth that we've had. So to have this be specifically on an account that I work on um, and have that recognition for all our hard work was really special. We have such uh, an amazing team with leads across social and programmatic and analytics and, and we all work so well together. And it's been like that for several years now. Uh, we really have such a great relationship internally which allows us to extend that to SAP Concur. And, and I think they can feel that. I think that's, that's really important. Nice. So what exactly was the award for? We received the regional spotlight for sustained audience growth, which really had uh, a lot to do with the expansion of our US SMB acquisition strategy to include a more omnichannel approach. We worked very closely with Haifa and her teams to identify different areas where we saw gaps previously and honed in on those opportunities to provide a more connected experience for both our existing customers and prospects. Yeah, when we first started working with Heather and Media Matters, we were just so focused on getting the highest lead volumes um, possible and just really focused on content syndication for that. But after the first year, we were really able to take a step back and just innovate the approach. Like Heather said, we expanded on it um, to take more of an omni-channel program with all these different tactics. Uh, we also have new goals because we don't wanna just deliver leads that convert to pipeline, but we want to deliver more pipeline per lead and get to that pipeline quicker. And so to do that, we added display retargeting, ABM, paid social. We added a bunch of new audience segments as well with new personas. And we even added a customer account targeted campaign so that we could uh, deliver some more add-on business growth. And so it's been really exciting testing all these new areas, um, expanding on our partnership together with Media Matters. And I really feel like that's part of why we won the award is, you know, we're constantly innovating, but we're continuing at the same time to deliver high quality, high volume of leads. Nice. It, it's impressive what uh, what you've done to, to, you know, to have the growth that you had, especially as with, with you know, travel being down as much as it is and so forth, you know, during these COVID times, it's, it's pretty unique. D did you have to pivot a lot to make any big changes? You know, what were, what were you able, you know, what did you do or what did you find that was so successful in, in creating the, uh, you know, creating your success when so many businesses were, were struggling? We had to make so many changes <laughs> at the mm -hmm. beginning of the pandemic. Like you said, you know, people aren't traveling. Nobody wants to talk about business travel. Um, and, you know, in the really early days of the pandemic, we were just focused on helping these companies in crisis mode. And we're, you know, in the moment with customers, not trying to sell them on growth. That's mm -hmm. not where any of us were. And then over the last couple of years, we've really focused on the importance of digital transformation. It's a new work world. We all have remote teams, partially remote teams. And we're trying to help business understand like the power of automation, helping them operate efficiently and effectively and increase their spend visibility. That's the priority right now. Nice. So it sounds like you guys worked together before COVID. Um, can you give a, yeah. a little bit of your history and maybe your evolution of your relationship? Sure. Yeah, we've been working together for over three and a half years, and that's when Heather and I started working together. So originally, like we said, it was just a focus on US SMB new business for lead gen, and now Media Matters is supporting a bunch of different teams across our organization, and we've brought in additional markets in EMEA, Australia, Canada, and we're not only expanding to those new markets, but then we're growing their strategies there as well. Since we first started working together, it's just so different now. Yeah, it's been such a great journey uh, and, and so cool to see how our relationship has grown since that first meeting at the Bellevue headquarters um, to expand into new markets and work with the different teams has been such a huge opportunity for us. Um, and, and really with no direct control over brand and other paid and in-house media tactics. I think we've done such a great job of working with these teams to build more connected campaigns. And Haifa and I have really experienced a lot together from our overall learnings of tactics and vendors to improved processes. Uh, we've seen people come and go and have had to wear a lot of hats, uh, but we've also 
watched each other grow and have truly supported each other and built a, a partnership that I feel has really contributed a lot to our success. Nice. You know, the fact that that Media Matters has been embraced by other groups within SAP Concur, you know, it seems to be a testament of the relationship that you guys have, have established and the successes that you've achieved. So yeah, what, what, would you, what would you consider to be some of the key elements of your success? Yeah, like you said, um, you know, we're working hand in hand, step in step with all these different channel owners across SAP Concur. We work with our advertising team, our paid search, field marketing. Um, we're trying to make sure our messaging is really consistent and create a seamless experience because we're all targeting the same audiences and media matters. You know, they're focused on supporting our paid lead gen efforts, but really they're an extension of the entire marketing organization because they're aware of what the other teams are doing. And they're helping to build these programs that are not duplicative, but complement. And they're taking the time to meet with the other teams and the other agencies. And so it creates a really unique and special partnership. Nice. So, so Heather, it seems like uh, pretty clear that you and, and your Media Matters team are, are considered me members of the SAP Concur marketing team. You know, this has to have uh, contributed nicely to your success. Yes, absolutely. I feel that. And, and I know the team feels that too. Um, you know, we really try to go above and beyond to provide stellar ideas and, and first class reporting and insights. We, we truly care about, you know, the work that we do and, and want to do really great work that we're all really proud of. Um, I think, you know, the people make such a difference. It all trickles down and we have, you know, really great ch channel leads who only focus on those specific channels. They're experts in their field. And we make sure to include them all in our planning and strategy sessions. So I think our success is such a huge team effort and I feel really lucky to have such a great team. Yay. So um, can you, Haifa, can you describe some of your challenges and pain points you've had to overcome as you've expanded from just a single channel content syndication lead gen? Sure. There's always going to be challenges and there's pain when you're trying something new. So we really had to change the way that we partnered internally. Um, you know, there's all these other teams. We had to work on our communication and just establish stronger partnerships because we want to ensure that the experience of our audience is consistent. But we want to, you know, always be meeting internally, looking through the data, the content, um, that'll always be true. We're always going to be reevaluating and rethinking our approach because it's a really complex funnel and it's just an ongoing conversation that we're having. Yeah, Heather. Yeah, so let's see. I think, uh, you know, it's always hard when you get really excited about testing you know, a new tactic or, or partner and you go through all the back and forth and you get the approval and it doesn't perform. Uh, I think there's always that risk when you try something new, but it's still disappointing when you get that support and buy-in to try something new um, and then, you know, it, it doesn't do well. So I feel like we have a good strategy in place to ensure we're covered with a majority of our budget uh, with tried and true tactics. And so when that does happen, we just try to take it as a learning opportunity. I like learning opportunities. So Heather, there, there are so many media outlets and solution providers out there. How do you decide who to work with? Yeah, I think you know we've got a good feedback loop with our reporting to see which partners have the highest ROI based on pipeline and revenue. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a mix of top performers, volume drivers, vendors that have unique offerings. And then um, you know there's finance publications and third party associations that really have that uh, reach into our core audience. You know, sometimes those do have higher CPLs, which is why the media mix is so important. Uh, we also look into past campaigns and, and think about those vendors that are super responsive or will offer added value to really help nurture our leads and support the campaign. You know, we remember that when it comes time to making that decision of who we're going to include again in our plan. And, uh, and Tech Connector has definitely been one of those partners. Um, you know, Performance has always been really great, um, definitely in our top, and we've been able to expand into new markets. So um, thank you so much for your partnership over the years, Bob. Thank you, Heather. You know, we thrive with partners like you guys. We, we appreciate and can vouch for the effective communication, trust, and respect. It's fun to be part of the win. 
So, uh, so Heather, how how does your marketing approach change when when you're designing campaigns for for a small business audience versus enterprise? Yeah, I mean, I think there's some overlap in terms of the networks that we work with and the specific finance publications that we use for for SMB and enterprise. Um, but some of these SMBs are brand new versus these enterprise businesses that have so many employees um, and really large buying committees. They have different journeys, and so we have to take that into account. Um, with these smaller companies, often you're talking to um, the owner or maybe one person in finance. Um, and with enterprise, it's several people in IT and finance that are involved. Um, so I do feel like there can be overlap between them, um, but there's definitely a lot more that we need to include for SMB. And it's, it's not as heavy with ABM. Uh, that's a huge part of what we do with enterprise. Um, and with SMB, it's part of it, but it's a smaller part. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of what we're doing with the SMB audience is trying to identify new accounts. And so, you know, you can't rely on ABM only for that. There's all these new accounts to add to the database and companies that are getting created. Uh, but our prospects and customers also really have different needs depending on where they're at with either building or growing their businesses. So like Heather mentioned, we adjust our strategy based on the account size larger mid-market accounts, they probably have more people, larger buying committee, they might also have more complex product needs. And so when we're planning, we have to take that all into account so that we're making um, plans and approaching the different segments for what makes sense for them. Sure. So um, Heather, what do you, how do you, um... How do you see the differences for uh, Media Matters? What, what makes you different than other agencies out there? Um, well, I think uh, one of the things that we do that's, that's pretty unique and, and cool is um, we look at doing a state of the state to share research and industry trends and identify new opportunities or tactics that we could potentially test for the coming year. We, we try to share that um, coming close here towards the end of the year as we go into planning for the next year. And I think it's a really great way to, um, to share and, and it can really spark some great conversations around, you know, are there personas that we should be tapping into more? Um, what content is really resonating and, and converting? Should we be creating more of that for next year? Um, so I think that it allows us to brainstorm and, and come together and, and look at what's out in the marketplace. Um, and I think it's, it's really helped us when we're looking at um, putting our annual strategy together. Makes sense. So what's on the horizon for 2023? It's coming around the corner. Anything new? I know. It's hard to believe, right? <laughs> uh, I think uh, definitely sharing learnings um, with other markets and, and really creating a larger global strategy is on our radar for sure. Um, I think obviously there's some things that we're doing in the U.S. that may not make sense in, in the other regions, but we want to make sure we're sharing these insights and the learnings that we've had over the years here. Um, and then look at, you know, if, are there opportunities in the other markets? Um, are there specific tactics or that we've had success with that um, we want to look at? And are there partners where we can negotiate global rates? So really looking to try and see where we can get some cost savings and, and hopefully, hopefully um, see more in return. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, we talked kind of about the success that we have sharing these internal learnings, but taking that approach and expanding it globally to become more collaborative with the different markets is going to be really exciting next year and part of our strategy for planning. Good. Look forward to it. So from, from your perspective, what are the keys to a successful client agency relationship? From my perspective, uh, clear communication is really important. And then developing processes that are super straightforward and replicable and then accessible to both teams. And then having really defined expectations of everyone's role on the team. And then being really clear about the KPIs. So everyone should just be on the same page about what's going to be uh, success in launching a campaign and how success will be measured. For sure. Yeah, I definitely think being clear on, on how success is measured is so important. Uh, every quarter we, we review the goals 
and you know determine what may need to be adjusted based on the budget and objective. Um, seasonality comes into play. Things like COVID come up. Um, so I think that can really impact performance. Um, so being clear on how we're going to be measured really matters when we go um, into planning and making sure that we can set ourselves up for success. And then I also think trackable campaigns that provide granularity and data to pull into reporting and inform our planning is key. Uh, as an agency, we really lean on that to determine what partners we want to work with. Um, and then also looking at what assets are converting, you know, looking at what's most popular versus what's actually driving conversions. Sometimes those can be different and we want to make sure that we have both. So having access to pipeline data is really imperative when it comes to B2B campaigns. Um, if we can't see the ROI, it really makes it difficult to make optimizations and understand what's working. Yeah, totally agree with that. You know, that's the approach across Concur to really lean into the data to build these strategies. But, you know, I think the biggest success for our partnership with our agency, Media Matters, is the trust that we've built. You know, everything we've talked about with communication and goals and, you know, all of that, it supports building trust. And it's it's important that people are following up on their commitments and making themselves really accountable, which we absolutely see. So that's huge. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> trust is definitely a big one. Um, and I think that goes across so many different areas from you know being an extension of the team, knowing we'll deliver on time, and, and then being honest when something was missed. I think with you know, sharing reporting, especially, it's so great to call out all the good things, um, but it's also important to discuss what wasn't so good. So being transparent and knowing that we can be open and honest, I think that really makes a difference and is such a huge part of what creates a true partnership. Nice. You've shared some amazing, uh, amazing thoughts and success ideas. So, you know, it, it sounds like clear communication, mutual respect and trust, having trackable multi-channel campaigns, persona-based segmentation, retargeting, personalization, and then that, that truly transparent and open relationship to learn and grow have really benefited both organizations. It's, it's really nice to hear. Um, any, other, any other thoughts of, or uh, fi parting thoughts? Otherwise, you know, it's been great that, that you've joined me today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, this was so fun. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk and share. And, um, you know, obviously we look forward to, to doing more with you and, and Tech Connector and, and the exciting things to, um, to come in 2023. Yeah, well, you know, thanks for joining me today. It's, it's interesting to learn how the partnership and, and, the, and the programs have evolved over time. Congratulations on the uh, recognition from the ANA. I wish you guys great success. Happy to be part of the ride with you. And thank you again. So have a nice day and thanks all everybody.